Okay, this morning we're going to do something a little bit different. We're working a cichlid bat, Phosphorochromus rostratus, which is uh, Susie's least favorite cichlid because it gets away. But what we're really doing is talking about the combined ALA, uh, American Library Association, American Killifish Association uh, Convention in Kalamazoo, 19, May 19, 20, and 21. Uh, I will be speaking there, which is why I have, they sent me this t-shirt that says staff. The name of the show apparently is Two in the Zoo, which I guess refers to Kalamazoo. And I haven't looked at the back. Does it say kick me? Does it? Does it say kick me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's what? Okay, okay, she's trying to get a killie fish uh, on my sleeve. What's on the other one? It's a live bearer, I think. I can't see it. It looks like a uh, friendless chrysotis from here, but I can't really see. Okay, in this cichlid bat, we uh, started polyculturing sword tails. Uh, we set up some red painted swords, and what we got out, we got a lot of fish. Uh, they did very, very well with the fossil of Chromis. Uh, we got, of course, uh, red painted, so we got reds, and we got greens. Uh, green must be a recessive to, uh, to the red coloration. I haven't worked out the genetics. Uh, I'm going to be taking uh, juveniles of these fish to Kalamazoo, uh, donating them to uh, the ALA auction, which is going to be on Sunday the 20th, starting at 11. 21st. I speak what? Sunday the 21st. Sunday the 21st. I'm calendar impaired. Uh, I'm speaking on the development of uh, breeding techniques to develop new strains of fish, uh, specifically live bearers, but it applies to other fish too, uh, to especially cichlids. Uh, I'll be speaking, I think around 5.30 or 6 o'clock on Friday the 19th. Uh, and then I'll be around the whole time to uh, talk to anybody. Like I say, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring a bunch of stuff to donate to the auction. I'm bringing uh, scuds, cherry shrimp, uh, Nahas grass, guppy grass, uh, uh, hornwort, the strain of hornwort we use in the, in the greenhouses, uh, and then juvenile live bears. Uh, probably, I'm going to bring some of our giant green sailfin uh, juveniles, some giant Liberty Molly juveniles, red swords, uh, Variatus, about four strains of Variatus, uh, and then I can't read my notes here. And uh, I'll probably bring some uh, Al Zephophorus alvarezes. Oh, I know that's Xenotaka, uh, which we're still calling Xenotaka ice me, Rio Tomazula. Uh, some authorities are calling it Xenotaka lionsi, but our go to uh, taxonomic. Uh, group, uh, ITIS, which is uh, ITIS.gov, which is what uh, environmental laws refer to. Uh, it still hasn't accepted that change, so we're using, we're still using uh, uh, Isonaria and Tomazula, but I'll bring some youngsters of those. First, let's get the cichlids out of the way. Oh, well, yeah, red painted swords, red swords, green swords. Uh, several uh, uh, varieties of swords. Okay, this is a big cichlid from Lake Malawi. This is one of our two breeder males. Let's put the other one in there. Yeah. Uh, they are big fish, but Susie doesn't like them because they are incredibly difficult to catch. Uh, you can have 30 or 40 fish this size in a 55 gallon vat and run a net there and get nothing sometimes. They're really annoying uh, in that respect. They're very, very adept at getting away. You see, these are big fish and they will get bigger yet. They're not, uh, 
Um, they're only a couple years old. They still have some growing to do. It's a slow growing fish and does get big. These are our two breeder males. I want to look at a little male. See if I can get these guys without them spying on me. And this is a six to seven month old male. By the way, live bear people stick around. We're going to be looking at live bears too. This is a, look, uh, a very young six to seven month old male that's coloring up. Usually they're twice this size before they color. So I'm going to set him aside just to see how, what he, how he grows up. It'd be nice to have uh, fish that color up earlier uh, so that they can be sexed and sold uh, instead of having to hold them until they're a year old. Uh, let's talk about that a minute. If indeed his early maturity, color, it, 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 two, several things. One is I'm hoping that he gets to reach the size of these other males and that early maturity doesn't mean that he's going to quit growing. Uh, secondly, if that if he does reach full size uh, and his the his early maturity is genetic, then by using him as a breeder, I'm shifting the gene pool a little bit toward early coloration, uh, which is not this the the wild uh, characteristic of this species. Uh, and it's just an example of how uh, breeder uh, selection of breeders can. Uh, can change a fish. Okay, let's take a look at females. Oops. Uh, as is typical, they're not very attractive, but they do have some nice pattering. Uh, you see, they're also a big fish. Uh, we had 16 females in the breeding colony. I added 16 youngsters. Uh, so these two males will have 32 fish to play around with. Uh, they seem to like warmer temperatures for breeding uh, than a lot of the Lake Malawi fish do. Uh, and so they're just really starting to drop fry, uh, pit fry at this point. So. Those are cichlids. Let me go put them up and then we're going to come back and talk about uh, the live bearers that we're in with them. Now I'll keep talking and see if it, if it works. I have to go down to about E10. Where most of, where the bulk of the females are already. I'm going to release these fish. Oops, I release that little male in there. Oh well, he won't do any breeding this time. He's too small. Uh, and we'll take a look at him at, uh, in about four months. See how he's doing. Okay, now let's look at sword tails. I'm going to, these are male red paintings. Let's put them up here and we're going to talk a little bit of genetics. Oh, we have one tuxedo male in there. I'll move him to another vat. Uh, but these bigger males definitely have uh, an allele on the Y chromosome that makes males large. Uh, the two smaller ones, or the, yeah, the two smaller ones in there, could have that gene, that allele, uh, and just not have the modifiers to get really big. What happens in sword tails? Is it the, on the Y chromosome, there is a gene that has three versions, three alleles, called small, medium, and large. And they refer to the uh, adult size of the, of the fish. Now that's a, it's got kind of a devil sword. Uh, and there's, doesn't look that great. It's got deformed tail. One problem with Painted swords is some of them do get melanomas in the black, and I think that may be the problem with that male. Uh, you can select against that. Uh, so we won't put those two smaller males back in there because they could be mediums that are just large for the uh, 
the fish with the large gene. Uh, but de the bigger males definitely are, are large. This guy has other genes, uh, probably on other chromosomes, uh, that increase the size even more. But the basic uh, size is determined by the, uh, that gene on the Y chromosome. Okay, let's put these males up. And we'll look at some females. I really like them. My favorite sword. Yeah. That's definite breeder. And that tuxedo is going to go in with uh, that that has red tuxedos. He's definitely got the lar large allele. This guy's a nice fish, but I'm going to purge him because I don't think he's big enough. And the reason I'm taking uh, offspring of these fish to ALA is to uh, uh, get some really big swords out there. Okay, let's look at, these are some of our female breeders. I'm just going to grab, no, they, no, they're painted. And you see there, big pesky fish a few generations of selecting for size and this is what you get i really like this female that one's nice they're all actually nice this one doesn't have great color there is one in there it has she's big she doesn't have good coloration but She's going to be made into good males. So, okay. So these are our red pantids, and they're going to go back in with those cichlids. This is our breeding calling. I'm adding a bunch of young females too. Uh, that there's some young females there that are going in. Note that I'm not using a net to get these guys. Nets tend to braid the fish a little bit. Hands are better. Wet hands are better. Okay, let's take a look at some reds. Very nice female. Nice thing. Of course, if you're using your hands, you don't want the fish to jump out. And, yeah. and that's going to be a breeder male. These are going to be, get moved to a uh, red sword vat with cichlids uh, for polyculture. And but I'll be grant. Uh, I actually have some bigger uh, red males and offspring from them that I'm going to be taking to, that we separated out of, about a month ago, and I'm going to be taking to. This fish, by the way, has some maculatus in it. Uh, crossing swords and, uh, and flatties can generate a really big fish. And I'll be talking about that in, uh, during my talk at ALA, how you can use uh, hybridization to improve things. Okay, uh, everything else. These are some guppies that were uh, in with um, with those cichlids. I'm going to put them back in. I'm trying to purge. You can see this Nahas grass. I'm trying to purge it from the 300 gallon fats because it's. Uh, uh, more difficult. It makes it difficult to separate out the fish sometimes. Okay, so the, these paintings are going back. Here are some of the youngsters that I'll be taking uh, to a uh, say, have I covered everything, Susie? Probably not. Anyway, uh, if you get a chance to go to Kalamazoo that weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 
Uh, there are going to be some great fish at the auction. There'll be killifish as well as live bears. I plan on stocking up. We lost a lot of live bears in the Texas winter storm and its aftermath. Uh, we lost, uh, if you go look at some of our videos, you'll see the, the tractor bucket loads of fish we had to take out. Ammonia went sky high, our plant filters were damaged. And so we lost a lot of live there. So I'm going to re be restocking at the auction. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to be picking up some killings. So why do you like killifish? What? Why do you like killifish? Why do I like killifish? Well, I paid my way through college raising killifish. So uh, with that and uh, being a tutor, but uh, killifish were uh, the primary thing. So I, I'm going to start doing killifish again. Uh, at any rate, if you are anywhere in the area, come by, listen to my talk, talk to me afterwards. I'm just going to be wandering around and uh, then I'll uh, looking at fish that I'm going to try to buy. <laughs> okay, good fish keeping. See y'all in Kalamazoo.